it comes down to experiences plus what are your values what's your reason why and then who can you serve and then i guess that's ultimately what's going to empower you to Welcome to another episode of the True Life Network podcast. I'm your host, Micah Shabby, and today I had a special treat for you guys. Today's guest was named as Forbes Magazine's number one online coach in 2021. She's the founder and CEO of Impact School, where her business philosophy is let the frameworks run the business and let great people run those frameworks. This ideology has allowed her to help hundreds of thousands of clients globally to grow their coaching businesses, courses, and cash flow. She was also recognized by the London Stock Exchange as a marketing genius and is widely known as a cash flow and growth expert. The secret is that there is no secret. Ladies and gentlemen, today I bring to, bring to you the one and only Lauren Tickner. Lauren, thank you for joining us. Wow, that intro. I don't know. Well, let's see if I can live up to that today. Thank you so much for having me. And it's brilliant to be here having connected quite a long time ago when both of us were in very different phases of our lives and everything that you've done and achieved since then has been so impressive so hats off to you and I'm excited to be here. I appreciate it I appreciate it and honestly it's an honor for me to have you here because I remember meeting you at GrowthCon uh, we were speaking online for a little bit and then I actually met you at GrowthCon and I was still in like that confusion state I was still trying to figure out my whole life and I remember you actually had like everything set up for yourself. So I was looking at your, your profile, kind of getting insights on how to actually build my online business, you know, following your podcast at the time. So it's an honor to have you and I appreciate you taking the time to join us. Oh, well, that's cool though as well. Like, isn't it crazy? Because I think so many people think and they see these people online, but really we're just normal people. <laughs> so, so many people idolize and they put other people on pedestals and it's amazing then you can just become friends with these people and just it's all about leveling up your mind and leveling up your vision for yourself and holding yourself to that standard it's actually a lot more simple than people make it out to be 100 100 so lauren real quick because something i just said there that you were actually one of my inspirations for actually building an online business because i remember watching your all, all your content and whatnot and i remember saying hey you know what i kind of want to do the same for myself i'm curious who were your inspirations when you were trying to build your business well, first things first, thank you so much. That's amazing to hear. And, um, you know, it's interesting because I think I'm one of these people where I will consume a lot of content from like a lot of broad, different perspectives, but I'll pick one topic and I'll focus in on that topic and go so deep, right? So I really like this concept, which is just in time learning, which is kind of like how in Japanese car manufacturing, they have just in time manufacturing, whereby they just bring in the product into the part of the, 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 the factory as and when they need it to churn and just build so many cars. So the way that I do it is like, I'll take a topic and then I will find like the best people in that topic that keep coming up again and again and again. Normally those people have like the broad the broad knowledge and they're going mass market, which is why they have a big personal brand, but they don't necessarily have like the best, best knowledge. So then what I'll do is I'll find these people and I'll look and I'll ask exactly as you just asked there, I'll ask them who are they going to for advice or I'll listen carefully to who they're interviewing on their podcast or who they're referencing in their articles. And then I'll go and look at that person's work. So really, if I think about the very beginning, when I was actually starting the online business stuff, my actual inspirations were people in the fitness industry that were YouTubers because they were just like a couple of steps ahead of me. And I saw that they had this online fitness coaching business. And I started only in fitness and doing online fitness training. And so That's I saw them right? like people like Rob Lipset, Brett Contreras. I don't know. These are like really, really fitness niche people. And it's funny because they're friends of mine now as well. And then when it came to like the online business space, going more mass market and scaling and stuff, people that I really admire now and that I have so much respect for people like Ed Milet people like Andy Frisella Tony Robbins those are the people that I look to now and I do think that in the space there is actually a real lack of women so I'm really hoping that I can 
spearhead that for women out there and show them what's possible for themselves so that then they can actually see oh it's not just a bunch of dudes out there like right right now someone that I'm following a lot is Layla Hormuzi I think she's bloody brilliant and um I'm grateful to know Alex I haven't actually met Layla but like it's really cool to see a woman just standing their power and putting their message out there in such a a confident way so honestly yeah most of the people that I look to are, are all dudes well, I mean, here's the thing. I think that most people don't even bring up the whole women empowerment thing. You know, I think it's such a underrated topic and we need to bring more awareness to it because just like you were saying, I think that it's a male dominated uh, industry and there are women out there who do want to reach their full potential and really bring their knowledge out to the table. And I think that, you know, ultimately the online platform is like the best way to start bringing more awareness to it. Right. But real quick, you started your, your first business, the, the fitness business at 17, correct? Yeah, yeah. As so, a side hustle, but yeah. <laughs> what What was your main thing? Well, I was in school. I was like in, in high school. <laughs> okay, okay. So technically it was still your main gig because that, that's where you're making your money. Yeah, that's actually kind of interesting how you define that, isn't it? Because, God, that's so true. Because like, why would it be a side hustle when that's the only way that I'm making money? Like, I was actually thinking about this the other day too. Like the amount of time the amount of productive time that I wasted in school, like, and I get what people say, you know, you're learning different skills and such. And yes, there are pros and cons to everything. But I was thinking like, imagine if in school, a side, like a track that you did when you were like, I don't know, 12 years old, was they would actually get you to like build some way of making money and actually serving and giving value to the world. That'd be such a cool thing to actually like add to the education system. And education system for me is like a massive, massive topic that I could honestly go on a tangent about for like 10 hours so maybe I will cut it there we can we can do it trust me I I think it's a big thing as well I'm not sure if you actually have a college degree do you so no I I was studying on uh supposedly the UK's number one business degree I dropped out because my professors had never had their own business so can you imagine I'm just sat there in my lectures on my laptop creating coaching programs for my clients building funnels you know doing dm sales right this is like I don't know, 2018 or something. And they didn't even know any of this stuff. Like I remember one time going to one of my professors and asking them for some marketing advice. And they told me, oh, just go read that textbook. And I was like, are you serious? This textbook was made 15 years ago. 100%. Online wasn't even a thing then. And, you, you, you know, here's, here's the thing with, with college. I dropped out three times. I don't, I don't believe in it. You know, it's... Right. The, Three times. I mean, I was I was doing it just because I was trying to to appease my parents, you know, make them happy because both my sisters had college degrees. But I dreaded going to class when I went to class. You know, I didn't really go to class that much, um, you know, but at the end of the day, I think that the only thing that you should go to school for is when you're going for a specialized career, like, for example, medicine or law. When it comes to business, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm right in line with you. You know, you're going to class learning from somebody making $40,000 when in reality, if you take the money that you're investing into school and just go get mentored by somebody who's actually in a position where you want to be, right, you know, that's going to give you more knowledge, more insights and actually put you in a position to go out there and do it. And I think that, you know, school is very overrated, uh, especially nowadays. Think about it. Most people go to school, you know, they, they, they get the piece of paper, they come out. And what happens? They can't even get a job because it's an oversaturated market, right? I'm just talking to one of my friends right now. Like, so she was literally my best friend growing up. And um, she has a master's in cancer, cancer research. And so she's been trying to get a job. She can't. She's working as a waitress right now. But she has so, she's so smart. She just can't get a job. But you know what you said just there? See, I right now I'm actually reading Life Force by Tony Robbins, the new, his new book. Great book. And it's Great bloody brilliant. Book. So good. And one of the things that I found just shocking was this concept of the fact that even if you go to university and you study for, if it, in the UK, I think it's like seven years to become a doctor. I don't know what it is in the US. I think it's about but the same. Now, the actual lifespan of that knowledge being relevant lasts like 70 days. I mean, that, Can you believe it? That, that's why even for business, like just like when you went to your professor and you asked him for marketing advice, he's giving you outdated you know, knowledge because he's reading a book that's 30 years old, you know? Yeah. And I think that especially now with the internet and having these online businesses, it's constantly evolving 
to the point where you can't even keep up with it, where there's always something new out there that's you can implement. And, you know, there's so many different avenues of making it happen. And I think that with the whole textbook in school way, it's just it's setting you up for failure because it's so outdated and it won't work with uh, what's going on with uh, the Internet and technology. Mm, it's true. And like the other thing that I, I was thinking about a lot, because today marks my six year anniversary of leaving my corporate job. Let's so go. I went to university after I did my corporate job. So my story is all in like a really, really weird order. But one of the things that I've been reflecting upon is like, it's so crazy how I remember feeling so judged and feeling so nervous to leave that corporate job because the people around me who were working there were telling me that it was a bad idea to mix my passion and my career because I'd end up resenting my passion. That's something that someone said to me and it stuck with me for the longest time. And then only like, only when I actually finally realized, wait, is this person who's telling me this actually happy? Are they genuinely fulfilled and loving what they're doing on a daily basis? Only when I realized that they weren't, did I realize that like I am taking advice from such the wrong people. But I think it's really difficult when people put other people on such a pedestal that it seems so unachievable to actually get there. And I genuinely think that I was just crazy enough to submerge myself. I went to so many of these fitness PR events because when I even had a tiny following on Instagram, I was... I say fortunate, I guess right place, right time, I would say. When I was working this corporate job, I was working in central London. And these events were always happening in central London. And so what I did is I would leave my job like an hour earlier. I would leave at 5.30 instead of 6.30. I would go to the event and I would just submerge myself and just be in close proximity with people that I saw as like celebrities. And it's funny because now like when I actually look at everything that they're doing, some of them are even clients of mine now. And it's really interesting how things come full circle. But I think really just realizing that like everyone is humans. Some people just have a bigger reach than others, but that's because they have more value to add. And that's because they've focused and literally stripping away so many things and just keeping your eyes on the prize on that North Star and constantly asking yourself, what problem am I actually solving? That for me was the biggest thing that changed the game for me. Because then I finally realized, wow, this is possible for me when I deliver enough value to the marketplace. 100%. And it can be as simple as that. You know, I, I, what I think it is, I think that society is conditioned by the system, right? And we're, we're conditioned to think small and average and whatnot. And I think that that's why you have to be very careful who you're surrounding yourself with and who you're actually telling your aspirations to because those people can knock it like that, right? And the way that I look at it, it's basically like a flower, right? If you, if you look at the environment of the flower, if the flower's not growing properly, okay, are you going to blame the flower or are you going to blame the soil, the, the air, the water, the, the environment, right? And I think that that's why social media could be such a positive thing for people because when they're in that negative environment, obviously it's gonna stunt their growth. Right. But if you can go ahead and consume the content and actually bring that into your internal environment and whether it's building those relationships, you know, from afar, you're actually understanding their process to the point where you could say, hey, you know what? It's actually possible. They're just like me, just like what you went through. Right. And then as you're starting to develop, you know, those people that are telling you, hey, you can't do it. It's because they can't see it for themselves. But when you're actually doing it, that's when people will believe in you because you actually disengage from the societal environment and went into your own environment, right? So good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you studied much on projection? I have. I like Dr. Joe Dispenza. I don't know if you follow some of his stuff. Who's that? Dr. Joe Dispenza. Oh, yeah, he's brilliant. But that's actually not even who I learned about projection off of. I was actually studying this concept of how to how to conduct the best interview. And so it was actually saying, okay, you should use these particular questions because that's going to get the other person to start projecting all over you. And it's going to allow you to see whether they're going to be a good team player or like how they show up in chaos and so on and so forth. And it's interesting because I really think that with what you're saying there, when it comes to this self-perception that we have, that is literally just a judgment that we are placing upon ultimately nothingness, right? We're just placing a judgment on how we are ranking ourselves in the world. 
And so when you can stop ranking yourself compared to other people, and I, I remember one time I was at a dinner and this was the weirdest thing for me because this guy that was saying this in the group, he was like one of the most gorgeous, charming, good looking guys I've ever seen in my Ooh, life. Somebody right? have a crush. And so yeah, we were just sat down and you know, we were just sat down and like literally we were just, I don't know what the hell we were talking about, but he was like, yeah, I mean, when it comes to the, this table right now, I'm just ranking myself right at the bottom. And I was like, what because in my head i'm like Oof. and and it was just interesting because like he was deeming himself to be like the least successful out of anyone there he had a great fitness business my friends a couple of my friends there were like in corporate they did well in corporate i have this was like i don't know a year or two ago and so like i'm not really thinking much about it and so it's just like the way that people weigh themselves against you i genuinely believe that that is the thing that prevents them from excelling in life because they don't see themselves as the person that ultimately they are because for some reason or another, some type of insecurity is getting them in the way when that insecurity, if you can channel that and actually use that as fuel to show them what you're capable of or whatever it is that lights you up, then you're going to be able to actually progress stuff forward, you know, but for you, what, what made you realize that it was possible for you? We're switching the tables. Now she's interviewing me. All right. I mean, for me, my my alpha female um, traits, my bad. You're good. And we're going to go deep on that, on that topic that you just said in just a second. But to answer your question, you know, I think that first of all, I don't know how much you know about my story. Uh, About seven years ago, I got to a point where I wanted to commit suicide. It happened through a breakup um, that I was putting everything out on the table. I was putting her on the pedestal, right? And I was doing everything for everybody else but myself. And I got to a point where I was a college dropout, unemployed, smoking pot, doing drugs left and right. I had long hair, pierced nose, baggy clothes, skater, snowboard kid, right? And, you know, it got to the point. I can't even imagine that. I'll I'll show you a picture. I'll send it to you. It's actually on my Instagram if you scroll back a little bit. Um, But I got to a point where I was getting so depressed because I wanted certain things in life. And it got to the point where I was doing things for everybody else, but nobody actually saw the value of what I was doing. And it got to a point where for a month straight, I didn't leave my apartment. I was just sitting there smoking pot and listening to music. And I think music is something that was a huge component of what really opened my perspective to what I'm capable of doing. Because the thing that changed my life was Eminem's line where he said, now I could have either sat on my ass and pissed and moaned or take the situation in which I'm in and get up and get my own. Right. And I think that's really what allowed me to realize that what my worth was and I always tell everybody your per, your potential is your worth so you need to utilize that full potential to go get what you're worth right but to, to really hone in on your question right there I understood the pain that I was going through and I utilized that in a positive demeanor to make me act intentionally to, to do everything possible to get as far away from that pain as possible wow I'm trying to find this photo of you on your IG it's way back it's way like back it on the screen is this is this a video podcast as well because if so you need to put it on the screen because I I gotta see this but yeah it's gonna be way back but you know one thing that you said there was like really really bloody powerful because you said that you were doing so many things for so many people but they weren't seeing the value and so something that I've seen in a lot of people that have like these kind of people pleasing tendencies is because when they deliver that value, their perception of themselves is so negative that it rubs off on the other person that just through the transaction of the relationship or the encounter, it ends up just feeling like kind of this negative, like weird type of nothingness. So I, I don't know like why do you feel like no one was valuing it that's kind of, it's just so fascinating you know I, I think that most people take things for granted and I think that ultimately it really takes somebody to drop their ego to understand and really be observant rather than just having a certain perception in place of you know it, it comes down to this right and Will Smith talks about this and I forget who he's quoting it off of it comes down to love right Genu- genuity and love Um, because you need to start doing things without setting expectations. Love is not transactional. If you do something for somebody, you can't expect something in return. You just got to do it out of that love and genuity and wanting somebody to to progress. And hopefully they'll they'll actually take it into consideration and actually appreciate it and value value it, right? Um, When it becomes transactional, now it's like, okay, I only care for you if you do A, B, and C. And that's not the way that the world works because when... You have expectations you're setting yourself up for disappointment and i think that's where the ego comes into play if you drop the ego and you just 
you know, humble yourself and just realize that, you know, it, here's the thing. When you're expecting something in return, it becomes transactional, just like I said. And that means that you're expecting a return on an investment that you're providing the time and or effort for that other individual. That's basically like money. Money is transactional, right? And I always tell everybody, stop chasing the money and start chasing being a person of value and the money will eventually come. Because at some point, if you continuously uh, conti continue to provide the, uh, the value, somebody will recognize it and would want to be there for you and provide the same thing without you having to say it. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I think as well, like it's making sure that the value actually is value. Because it Elaborate depends who you're asking. It always Elaborate. depends who you're asking. Elaborate. Okay? Go deeper on that. Right. Well, because for example, like let's just say someone was to come to me and they're gonna offer me the best fitness coaching program in the world. To me, I wouldn't I don't need to pay for that. I don't need that. I it's not valuable to me. But to someone who's really struggling with their fitness, like a billionaire, they're gonna pay a lot of money for that. But if it's like a a, a mom that's just been divorced that has no money. She can't pay a lot of money for that, even if she values it. So it's like that intersection between someone valuing it, plus having the ability to actually pay for it, plus you genuinely being able to deliver on it. This is why with my clients, like I'm always like, guys, you need to be able to actually say to someone that you'll work with them until they make their investment back. If it's a financial type of offer, like a B2B, and then if it's like B2C, until they achieve their goal, put some skin in the game, you know, have yourself on the I'm going to throw a little twist on you uh, right now, okay? Because what's the definition of value? Do you know? Yeah. Look, look it up real quick. Look up the actual definition of uh, value. I do this all the time. I always look up uh, the definition of words because we always have a perception of what we think the word means. But in reality, if you actually look up the definition, it changes the whole entire meaning. And then anything that you're communicating to somebody else can change the whole meaning of a phrase, sentence, and whatnot, right? I... I and the crazy thing as well, though, is like for me, this is this is might be sometimes the British and the American definition is different. That's the crazy thing. So in the British one, because mine's still on that value is the regard that something is held to deserve the importance, worth or usefulness of something right there. Right or there. or in that's when it's a noun, when it's a verb, it's estimate the money, the monetary worth of. OK, so. Estimate the worth of. Okay, let's just look at that phrase for a second. What is the most valuable thing that you can give somebody? Well, I would say time, but I wouldn't say time. I what? think it's, I, I would actually say energy. Okay, so I agree with that, but it does come down to time, right? The most valuable thing that you can give somebody is your time. But how you're actually giving them your time is a hundred times more valuable. Because if you're actually giving them undivided attention, that energy rubs off and they feel that and then they actually give that in return without you having to, to, to complain saying, hey, you see what I'm doing here with you? Um, because t you can't get time back, right? You can't give, you can't get energy back, right? If you put out a certain energy and you're, you know, putting it for a certain time frame, you, that's something that you'll never get in return, uh, like back, you know, that you can go back in time or whatnot. So I'm trying to explain this in a way that it makes sense. No, no, I get it. I like, I totally get it because like, m well, money, you can always make more of it. Whereas time, you can't get more of it. Like I, I, this is a big shift that happened for me in like the last two years, honestly, like now, cause in, in my head as well, it's like, I've already achieved all the financial success and abundance. Time just hasn't caught up yet. Cause if you actually look at the intersection between, oh gosh, I'm going to get like really woo woo now. It's all good. Time, space all good. and mind. Right. If you, if you look at the intersection, so I have like, I call her my fairy godmother. She's like. I don't even know how to describe her. She's like such a good friend of mine, but also like a spiritual like coach to me and just an amazing, amazing mentor to me in so many ways. And so she talks about the concept, the, the intersection between, it's not an intersection, but it's like time, space and mind, right? Without one, you can't have any of them. 100%. Okay. So for example, like <laughs> if, you, if you have space and time, but your mind isn't perceiving it, then what is it? It's nothingness. It's like before you were alive, like it was nothing, you weren't perceiving anything, right? And then if you, so I could go into this now, but what I'm trying to say is like, just going back to your point, I agree with the fact that time is the most valuable thing. However, the thing that I am actually the most precious about is my energy. And let me tell you why. 
I could have a phone call from someone who calls me up for 30 seconds and tells me like the most horrible things ever. And it's like personal. It's about my family. And that could ruin my entire day and all of my time for the next three weeks because it's not my energy. Ultimately, that's why I think as well, if you're trying to be a high achiever, if you're trying to be a peak performer, protecting your energy 100%. with everything you possibly can is everything. Like I get meals sent to my house. I, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. go ahead. It, it's all you. I'll jump into it in a second. No, like it's just that. It's like I do anything I can to protect my energy. Because like, for example, if, if a client's complaining, I don't even want it to get to me unless it's getting to like lawsuit level which is never going to happen. Well, it might, but like, you know, my team deals with that. Cause if it got, comes to me, I take it personally. Like it's an attack on me. Whereas my team, they can handle it. But watch this. It's like, it's not, it's not a personal. If threat. it comes to you now, it's consuming your time. And that's where your energy shifts because now you're giving it attention. The neg- negativity, you're giving it the attention, the undivided attention. It's how you're spending that time, which is ultimately dictating your energy. We can go into like... So maybe it's, like, your, it's perception. It's actually percept. It's all perception. 100%. Because why is it affecting my energy? It is all perception. And this is where it comes down to also knowing your values as well. And also knowing what's important. And I think sometimes like, it can be really easy to get so worked up about something so small, as an example. But then also, sometimes it's good to have these perceptions whereby it's like frustrating you or making you tired or just really something that you don't want there because it shows that you care but then at the same time like why do you even care because like what is this all about anyway right like you can go between those two those two balances and so i think having that healthy balance is something that we're all constantly striving towards because at the end of the day i was on i was on this call with she was a client of mine sometimes i like to get on calls with like some of my higher level clients, just like one-on-one, just to ask them like, Hey, how's your experience? Like, what are you liking? What are you not liking? How can we improve? So she was actually, interestingly enough, giving us feedback about the fact that our marketing doesn't line up with our client fulfillment so much because we're more good at working with higher level clients. Like that was kind of interesting because she's higher level. And so she was saying like, you need to put this out there. You need to show all these systems that you guys have. So that was really interesting. But um, the thing that we were talking about is like, the thing is the thing, right? Like the pursuing of the thing is the actual thing that you're trying to ultimately achieve. <laughs> and so it's being able to find peace and harmony in that and enjoyment in that. Then when you actually think about anything external, if you're content in the sense that the thing is the thing, <laughs> look, I, then you look, lose any outcome. Like, it's just the weirdest. I get everything that you're saying. Here, here's the thing, ready? Most people, most people, though, are allowing the external to control what's going on internally, when in reality, if you can master that internal game and you really get to understand what's going on inside you, you can influence and manifest what you want exter- externally, right? It's all that internal game. And this is why I'm very big on mindset. Anything that I do uh, with all my clients, whether it's life or business coaching and or company sales training, I always implement um, you know, uh, personal growth and development into all the teachings that I do because I think that's a huge component of what's really gonna allow people to excel. Because here's the thing, success is 80% psychology, 20% skill. That means a, a bigger portion of your success is gonna come down to your mindset. The skill, that could be marketing, strategies, technique, blah, 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 right? That's easy, anybody could teach that. But what people can't teach is how to understand that internal game and navigate internally to bring clarity. Clarity is going to breed breed confidence. The definition of confidence is a self-assurance and appreciation of one's own abilities and or qualities. But if you're not taking the time to understand that internal game and the internal qualities and abilities, you're not going to be able to effectively perform on the strategies, that 20%, and you're not going to get the same result that you're really looking for. And this is why I tell everybody, It really comes down to your mind. Your mind is the one thing that has a true power to either make you or break you because your perception will dictate how you feel, how you feel will dictate how you act, act or make make decisions as well. And how you act will determine your results. It's not what happens to you. It's how you react to what happens. It's going to determine your results. Boom, mic drop. And that's the truth. I mean, I think when it comes down to like business techniques and success and everything, what I've realized is it ultimately is about frameworks. Do you have a framework for this one thing? If not, go get one. If yes, why aren't you doing it? So when you're saying frameworks, 
When you're saying frameworks, do you mean systems? Just a way to do something, a process to achieve a specific outcome. A framework can also be like a mental model as well. So it's a way of looking at something because then as well, that prevents you from those decision-making periods that can get your mind to get in its own way. And so this is the biggest thing that I don't know about you, but it's what I see all the time is like people literally just get up all in their own way because they're questioning, oh, is this the right thing? Is that the right thing? Is this right? Is that right? There's no black and white. It's not as simple as that. And so everything is all the gray area. And so when you can learn to live in that gray area and see everything as an opportunity for growth, then you're able to live with so much more freedom. As soon as I realize like, huh, everything that I'm doing, I can learn and then I can use that in the future. And it's just part of my story. Now what happens like when I'm going through something really bad, it's really weird. Like I just think to myself, wow, this is going to be part of my book. That's all I think to myself. You, you know, you know, it's funny uh, what, what we're talking about right now. I think that most people don't realize that here they always go to coaches or try to seek answers externally. Right. But once again, I always tell everybody it's that internal game. All the answers are within. But the problem is that yeah. society is conditioned to go ahead and seek external validation rather than internal, their own validation. So they're not doing the work to really uh, navigate that internal game to find the answers, what's gonna work for them. Only you know what's gonna work for you. What works for me doesn't, doesn't necessarily, it's gonna work for you. But there is a psychological um, you know, process that you need to take on as an individual to understand that internal game. And I think that's the biggest component of what's going to allow people to be set free and face their truth and ultimately allow them to live their true life. That's why I call it True Life Ventures. Um, but, you know, I do want to, I know, you know, um, I'm ranting on right now, but I do want to take it back to something that you said about the, the, the guy that you had dinner with, right? So something that he did right there, and I think this is a huge component as well, the comparison portion, right? Comparison will set you up for disappointment because you're looking at somebody else and being jealous of what they have rather than realizing and taking responsibility for your own life to go ahead and create your own life, right? And I think that the reason being is because it comes down to our perception. And Jay Shetty talks about this. He's, he's, um, he's basically quoting a philosopher named Cooley. He says, I'm not what I think I am. I'm not what you think I am. I am what I think you think I am. So one more time, I'm not what I think I am. I'm not what you think I am. I am what I think you think I am. So we live in a perception of a perception of ourselves. Our perception of ourselves is created based off of what we think other people think of us. And that's why you need to be able to drop the ego like your friend did and say, hey, you know what? Everybody else is above me. I'm at the bottom here. And then act like a sponge to take in all the information and be able to, to be aware rather than consumed in our perception of what we think is actually going on. Well, another thing that I'll say on that is that we compare ourselves to the projection that other people put out about themselves. So we have to be com really careful when we're comparing ourselves because you never know what is going on behind that social media feed. And there has been countless people, countless people that you would be shocked to even think they have any level of tiny percentage of negativity in their life coming to me telling me that they're broke they're getting divorced they're going through bankruptcy they're getting sued or something and so that's another thing to be really really careful of because if we compare ourselves it can be used as positivity and fuel for growth and to seek out inspiration of what is possible and that's what I aim to be in the world that's what you aim to be in the world but you have to be so careful when doing it around other people that you don't know fully and so one thing that I came to a realization of in the last year even the last six months is that when I'm going to go work with someone new I will always make sure that I get at least three referrals or speak to three of their clients before doing so because I've been burnt so many times in the past by people who are giving out this image and this depiction of themselves that they aren't actually. And so this is where you have, you've got to be so, so, so careful because it's very easy to deceive nowadays. But at the same time, like uh, when it comes to, when it comes to this kind of like whole success mindset and everything, I also think there's something to be said for people who just genuinely love what they do and who want to actually make change in their industry. I think moving forward, like that's something which 
is going to become more and more of a thing because I think that a lot of the people that were coming into the industry just for money or just for fame or just for hype have been taken down and taken out. So that's kind of interesting too. 100%. Yeah. And uh, just like how you were saying, I, I think that everybody puts filters on their lives. Um, I try to keep it more transparent as to the best I can. Um, for example, the way that I utilize social media is it's not out there for anybody else but myself. To tell you the truth, I utilize Instagram and all my platforms as a gimmick because I know that sometimes I get into a certain mindset and it gets negative. So what I'm doing on Instagram is really just giving myself advice so that when I'm in that mindset again, I could go reflect and say, hey, you know what? Now I'm accountable to this because I put this out there. This is for me. I have to stay intentional. And because I'm giving myself advice, I guarantee you it's going to work for somebody else too. They can find value out of it as well. And I think that, that the comparison portion is stop looking at the filters and you need to be exposed to that individual and their process to go ahead and say, hey, is this really the life that I want to take on? Because especially when you're trying to do something big, there's a lot of obstacles that are going to come your way and you have to be prepared to take them on head on and not look at them as obstacles. Just look at them as opportunities. It's that perspective once again. And I think most people don't realize what they're jumping into when they first start uh, you know, their, their entrepreneur journey or actual the journey to go, go live their true life and then they realize it's not what they thought because of all the filters that people put out there oh that's true but as well when you say their true life that is i would even argue even more important for people that have already quote unquote made it because think about how many people are out there doing something that is successful from the outside but they're not able to actually give their ooh and show up as the best leader that they could be. Because let's say they're spending, I don't know, 80 hours a week working or 90 hours a week working and spending like two hours a week with their family. Or for example, they're doing something and they're hustling for it because it pays really, really well, but they're just not passionate about it. And I think to me, success without the fulfillment is the ultimate failure. I don't we got know who Tony Robbins that. over here. Tony did. Hey? Tony said it. Tony Robbins. Was it him it. as well? Damn, I've been talking about him like five times today. That's weird coincidences. But, you know, that's actually funny. This is how crazy marketing is, okay? So I woke up yesterday morning and I was feeling like just a bit, oh, I'm like really tired. I'm feeling a bit like sore in my muscles. And so for every every single day for like the last, I don't know, three years, I was doing self-hypnosis for 20 minutes in the morning. Okay, now I stopped actually doing it around three months ago because I was on this really good flow, but I would just get out of bed and just go straight to my laptop and start writing. And so I stopped doing it and I started doing it like in the middle of the day. For some reason, yesterday was the first day in like three, maybe even maybe even six months that I grabbed my phone and I did the track in the morning. And yesterday, because I didn't have it saved on my phone, I went on YouTube and I typed it in and the ad that came on was actually like, this insane ad for like business mastery. And you know how crazy this was? It was like 40 seconds. It's the only ad that I've ever watched all the way through on YouTube. And it was for Tony Robbins. Anyway, I guess I forgot about it. And then later that day, I realized, oh my gosh, the marketing worked on me. I then went to my laptop later that day and downloaded Life Force. And then that's what I've been listening to now. And so I guess that's why he's top of my mind. But that's actually crazy how strong marketing was because his ad was for one thing, but then I ended up buying something else. And now I'm talking about him in front of like hundreds of thousands of people, you know? So there we go. I guess it works. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the thing. It's all that energy when you're putting it out there and you consume yourself with it, all of a sudden things just start happening and aligning, right? But something that you said about fulfillment real quick, and I want to get your perspective on this. Uh, I'm going to give you my perspective on fulfillment, and then I want your perspective on fulfillment, okay? Uh, I think that fulfillment is the, the greatest thing that you could ever take on, uh, you, or you have to figure out your process of what's going to fulfill you, right? I don't think it's necessarily saying something that you're more passionate about. I think that it com fulfillment comes from progression, right? So basically understanding what you want in life and making sure that you have goals and targets. Goals are long-term, targets are what can I do today that's gonna to get me a step closer to actually achieving those long-term goals, right? So I think that every morning when I, when I wake up, I basically write down my goals and then I write down three targets, what can I do today for each goal that's gonna get me a step closer. And throughout the day, I'm utilizing it as a checklist, right? So now I'm getting all these little wins throughout the day because success and failure are not one big event. It's a buildup of all the small things you either did or didn't do that got you there, right? 
So now I'm getting all these small wins, which is giving me a sense of progression, which is ultimately giving me a sense of fulfillment. And then ultimately that's going to bring me happiness. It's not necessarily achieving something monetary, but it's the continuous chase you know, of that progression and to get to where you can actually live out your full potential. Now I want your perspective on fulfillment. For me, and I think it's interesting because everyone has different perceptions of this. For me, fulfillment is also progression and it's progression based upon potential and potential for me is based upon values. And so I've had some actually really big debates. So I live by, and there's a lot of entrepreneurial people here from all different walks of life. And it's bloody brilliant because you have the most diverse conversations. And I was actually having a debate with my friend about this. His name's Yanis. And we were sat there and I was saying, no, the definition, reason of life is for progression. Humans chase progression. And then he was basically saying, no, humans chase satisfaction. And satisfaction, if you think about it, homeostasis, right? Our bodies aim to stay satisfied so that they can fulfill basic needs. And so what I realized at that moment was that most people, they do chase satisfaction. And that actually is true for the everyday person. But then there's people like us, there's the entrepreneurs, there's the crazy people that go out there that want to achieve more, that want to create something, that want to make a difference and that have an ultimate mission. And we chase progression, we chase growth, we chase putting something meaningful out there into the world that is genuinely going to make an impact. And personally, those are the people that I aim to surround myself with because I truly believe that entrepreneurs and people that are willing to get some type of message out there, we're the ones that can actually create meaningful change. And that's done through building a vision that is so clear that people are then able, as team members, as an example, and as people from your audience, as an example, their vision fits within your vision. And so even I think my vision is small sometimes when I'm listening to these visions of other people that I hear that in their lifetime, they're like in their fifties and they've already created like five moonshot companies that have changed the lives of millions of people, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we can achieve so much more than we think. And so I think for the average person, yeah, they chase satisfaction and they chase short-term pleasure. But I think for the majority of people that I now surround myself with, It's kind of crazy because I actually don't know many people like that anymore. And so sometimes that's another reason why I have to really go out there and just like make an active effort to talk to random people as I walk by them on the street. I do that every single day. I speak to three people. Why? Because otherwise I'm literally only talking to type A entrepreneurs who are at the top of that game. (laughs) And so it creates this like weird bubble. And so in a way it's amazing because like my rate of growth is huge because I'm actively placed myself in this environment and I've built it over the years but at the same time it can be quite deceiving because when you're trying to create solutions you need to know who you're creating those solutions for and then that requires actually having some type of touch with the real world 100 uh there's one thing that you said uh about uh chasing short-term comfort I love that I have a quote that I always tell you know most people are you know exchanging um long-term self-respect for short-term comfort um, so I just wanted to mention that, but here's, here's something that you, that you just brought up the vision, right? And I think that most people want to have an, have a vision and I want your perspective on how to create a vision. Well, when it comes down to creating your vision, it really comes down to knowing what your values are. So for me, two of my core values are freedom and fulfillment. And so I know that, that everything that I do is centered around that. And so for me, The reason why as well is like another huge, huge thing. So like, why do I care about these things? Why are they important to me? Well, the biggest reason why it's so important to me, first things first on the freedom side of things, my younger brother, he's two years younger than me. His name's Adam. He's disabled and he's epileptic. He has autism. He's in a wheelchair. He can't eat. He can't talk. And so I've seen someone who's literally had their freedom stripped away from them at birth. And so when I see other people out there who are, living based upon how life is just guiding them through and they're constantly complaining and moaning about their life and even simple things like, oh, I really just, I can't motivate myself to go to the gym. It's like, but you can do it. So why aren't you? You need to hold yourself to a higher standard if you genuinely wanted it bad enough. You have the freedom to do it. So you should take advantage of the fact that you can. Because I've seen someone that doesn't. 
who's literally had it taken from them, who would dream to be able to go and put themselves through the most disgusting workout of their life or go through the most tough business negotiation ever or put themselves out there on social media when they really are so embarrassed and are so shy. And so because I've seen that, it's like if someone is, if someone has the ability to do it, I think personally, I believe that they should. But then obviously not everyone's still going to choose to do that. That's why I like to work with entrepreneurs practitioners who are really good at what they do who now need to actually monetize what they're doing because I want them to stay in their zone of genius right because if let's just say you are really you're really good at helping people get their dream job okay well you should stay helping people get their dream job you shouldn't be fumbling around with how to build a website or trying to tweak a logo or trying to send dms on social media to get sales you should stay in your zone of genius and the rest of that should be taken out of your hands. And the reason that's so important to me is because, I mean, I've just seen it firsthand through having coaches who are bloody good at what they do, but also through going to university and being taught by someone who is not the best expert. And so I've always just gone to the source. And for me, that just allowed me to create exponential growth in all areas of my life. And so that is kind of, and the fulfillment side of things for me really comes down to working in the corporate job and just it's sucking the life out of me. And so it's really that combination of all those few things. It's, and I guess this is maybe something that I should spend some time building a framework around, you know, how do you actually figure out exactly what your values are? Because everyone does have different ways of doing things. I've done various different exercises, but really when I think about it now, just on the spot, it comes down to experiences plus what are your values? What's your reason why? And then who can you serve? And then I guess that's ultimately what's going to empower you to create your vision. I love that. Honestly, I think that we are very in line with that. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to say the, the, the fact when you said about people getting the opportunity to go ahead and go to the gym, I think most people go in with that per- negative perspective, right? They, they go ahead and say, I have to rather than I get to. Every single day that you w- wake up, that you're breathing again, you're getting another opportunity to reach your full potential. And I think that most people don't really realize that they're taking advantage of they're, they're not fully comprehending the opportunity that they have every single day because you never know when you're going to go and you have to live it to the fullest, right? You have to be able to live your full potential and really provide that value of who you truly are to the world because you're here for a reason. Everybody's here for a reason. Every day we're writing a, a book of our, like a, a page of our book, right? And your story is ultimately what's going to influence other people to go get it. At the end of the day, your ruin is your gift to get back to the world. What ruins you and puts you in your all time low and you get through it is ultimately your gift to go seek out other individuals going through a similar situation and help them get through it. So when it comes down to vision, I'm exactly right there. I think it first starts with analyzing your experiences, not just any experiences, the most painful experiences that you've gone through, because that's where you find your ruin, right? Because that's ultimately what shifts your perspective. Pain changes us, right? Tony Robbins, ready? Change happens when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. So you need to analyze those pain points to understand why why they were pain points for you, which ultimately create your values and your standards of life of what you want to create. And then you have to utilize that as the reason why. Your why needs to have a pain point attached to it because if it doesn't have a pain point, it's just a goal with no substance. You're going to be pushing to achieve it. That's where you burn out. That, That shit will die right out having those pain points and understanding it was going to pull you into action, keep you intentional to do every single thing possible to get as far away from those pain, uh, pain points, right? And I think that most people really underestimate, undervalue the why, the reason why you're doing it. They just wanna do it for external validation rather than internal. And that internal comes down to that pain and understanding those experiences and the values and the, the standards that you do have for yourself because now you're gonna be able to lead by example and influence others through your story and your message. Your message is your message. That's how you create vision in my opinion. The people who are also really internally motivated, the thing that I would say there is that oftentimes they're so internally motivated that they actually then fail to build a business around it because they feel a sense of guilt for charging for what they're actually selling. I was talking to a woman yesterday And she has an amazing, amazing book and community based around helping people recover from amenorrhea, which is basically where you don't have your period. And so we were talking about it and she was like, oh, but I just, I can't charge for it because if I charge for it, they really need my help. And I said to her, no, when people don't pay, they don't pay attention. And so this is fundamental because if someone doesn't, hasn't 
put up a dollar for it or a dime, then it's just fleeting to them. They're not going to take advantage of it. I remember when I was a fitness coach, I helped a bunch of my friends for free before they went to university when I was actually working in my corporate job. And I remember we, they came back for Christmas and I saw them and two of them were fatter than they were before. And I was like, what's been going on? And they were like, oh, well, I just haven't had time or this or that. And I was like, well, I, I knew that I wasn't bad at what I did because I had some other clients who were getting really good results. And I realized at that moment, okay, well, it's, there's no point in me trying to chase someone because then there's risk of me actually starting to think that I'm not good at what I do simply because the people that I've sold and enrolled are not my dream clients or they haven't paid me money and there's been no value exchange there. And that was a big lesson. And I think that that's honestly huge right there because what people don't realize is when you actually invest money, now you're making an investment into yourself. You have to stay committed. Otherwise that investment goes to waste, right? You're investing into yourself. If you can't invest into yourself, how are you gonna get anybody else to invest into you and take your time serious and your knowledge serious? right? It's built in ethics. And I think that the, the, the biggest component here is with uh, the client that doesn't want to charge people, what she doesn't realize is, look, she's looking at money at, in the wrong perspective. Money is a tool for exchange, right? And what you need in order to, to focus on is the message. How important is the message? In order to get exposure to the message, you need money. Money just exposes people and allows you to be in a position to get that message out there to further uh, to get to, to have a further reach and influence other people. So that's where she's going wrong. She has to understand what she needs in order to, to bring it out to the world. So my perspective, my perspective. But I've been doing a lot of talking. I apologize. I, I, let, let's take it back to you. So, Lauren, I know that you have a podcast. I know that there was uh, something that happened with the podcast. I kind of want you to go into your story about, you know, what the purpose of the podcast is what happened with the podcast and what's going on next with the podcast. So there's three steps there. Well, I'll interview you for the podcast and uh, we can have another, we can have a great conversation about all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was crazy. So long story short, I essentially had a hundred plus episodes. I had loads of big guests like Ed Milet and Dean Graziosi, et cetera. And so it just got hacked. Right. And so the story's long. I've written a long post about it. Um, if people want to see it, it's on my Facebook. They can check that out. But with that said, the biggest thing that I learned, honestly, was like, just don't let things knock you so big time. Because for me, it really knocked me, actually. It didn't really knock my confidence, but it gave. I, I started to have a resentment towards creating content. And that was a big mistake. So fortunately, Clubhouse came about just a couple of months after the podcast hacking situation came about. And so I went on Clubhouse, built a big old audience there. And that was great. I mean, we grew our email list by tens of thousands purely just from Clubhouse. And that was cool. But when it came to the whole experience, I realized and, and now I understand the power of long form content that stays evergreen. And I was doing that before, but I got really derailed. And why did I get derailed? Well, that's something that I've been doing a lot of like inner work on. And I realized like, wow, I, I was doubting my abilities as a leader. I was questioning myself and my ability to actually sustain something and, and to stick to something. And I was wondering, like, this is weird because my belief is that how you do one thing is how you do everything. And so I was like, I can do everything in this other area or all these other areas. Why am I not sticking to it here? When I, when I got hacked, like it literally just knocked me. And so one of those things, I mean, I've learned now um, for me, it was pretty tough, honestly, just because it was just the biggest thing was the questioning of my abilities as a leader, because it was actually an ex employee who hacked. And it was very strange because we actually ended things on really good terms, but it only came to my realization after that his role had changed so massively. And I think he had been with me since the beginning, that I think he just thought that he wanted to be part of something, you know, moving into the future. Maybe he wanted equity or something. We never even spoke about it because he parted with because he wanted to go to university. And that was the last thing I, I knew. Um, so yeah, it was tough. I think uh, I'll probably do a full podcast episode on it and get Nor from my team to come on because like she was like on the direct other line when I was calling her like, no, the podcast just got hacked. But frankly, I would just say to anyone who is creating content, like if something like that ever happens to you, again, it's part of your story. It's part of your lesson. 
I'm not even explaining it very well now because it's, it's getting late for me here. My brain's turning to mush. But um, with that said, it, it was, yeah, it was a big learning curve for me as to like, don't ever let something knock you down again. And just ask yourself this question. Is this going to matter in three to five years from now? Because if the answer is no, then move on and just get back to work. 100%. So real quick, last question. I know it's getting late there. I want to respect your time. You're, you're out in Dubai, you know. And first of all, I'm jealous. I, I've always wanted to go out there. So I can't even believe that you're living there. But, um, you know, the, the last thing that I want to know is what's the vision with the, the podcast once you start everything back up again? The vision with the podcast is that we know that in the, in the past, we were actually um, consistently in the top charts. And we were always serving thousands and thousands and thousands of people and so my vision is really i just want to be able to empower great entrepreneurs great practitioners people who are just bloody good at what they do i just want to empower them to be able to stay in their zone of genius and to be able to think differently it's called in so, so actually impact school my company was like i don't know i was just kind of doing coaching and programs it didn't really have a name i just had names of programs my podcast was called impact school before impact school was called impact school which is interesting and no one really knows that. And so for me, it's just the school to actually learn the things that can directly make an impact on what you're doing right now, like actually tangible value. For me, that's what it's all about. And so the reason I want to share that stuff is so that people can just get out of their own way, stay in their zone of genius, do the thing that they're good at and serve more people at scale. And I think that when we have more great people doing that, the world as a whole is going to be a better place. And also it's just so many more people are going to be living that life of freedom and fulfillment. And then I really think that that's what the world needs to actually move forward in the right direction, frankly. And guess what? Everyone gets to make a lot of money while doing so. 100%. No, I love that. I mean, at the end of the day, it just it always gets tied back to your message, right? Mm -hmm. so, so Lauren, if somebody wants to get in contact with you, if they want to check out your services, where can they go to find you? Yeah, they can listen to Impact School podcast. Just type in Impact School into any podcast provider. You'll find it. And then I'm pretty active as well on Instagram. That's a good place. And we have a Facebook group as well. The Facebook group, I do weekly live trainings. Um, I don't know if you're in there. Uh, it's pretty fun, actually. Sure it's, it's good. Am. But yeah, the Facebook group, uh, I have like my my best coaches at Impact School. They like the ones that work for the company. The ones that like, so it's so funny. I actually, there's three of them. We hired them as like consultants to help us with certain things in our business. And then they were so good that we hired them to actually be able to serve our clients. Right. So it kind of all happened like that. So they're amazing. I mean, they're the people that I trust with like growing my own company. And so they do live sessions each week. And so it's cool in that the again, just type impact school into Facebook. Basically, if you type Impact School or, or Lauren Tickner, you'll, you'll find something. And so just send me a message. Let me know that you came from here. And uh, yeah, I would be delighted to connect. And you better subscribe to the podcast because Mike is going to come on and it's going to be so good. Appreciate you. We'll, Ladies, we'll do it in person as well. Let's do it. When you're out here in Miami, we'll do it. Maybe, I, maybe I'll come and out to Dubai. To eat ceviche off. Maybe I'll come out to Dubai. I've been uh, wanting to make a trip out there. I'll take my wife and the baby. Well, it's getting, oh, your baby is so cute. It is getting hot here though. I have to say it's getting too hot. So I guess, I guess it's getting hot in Miami too. Hey, I'm, so I'm, maybe we have to meet in the middle in the UK. Hey, I, I, I don't <laughs> mind the heat. I, I, I used to love the cold. I can't do that anymore. So heat, I'll take it on. But ladies and gentlemen, you guys heard it here. Lauren Tickner, I appreciate you for joining us. Definitely go give her uh, a follow and uh, definitely, you know, check out her, her, her podcast. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. It was a I love these conversations that just like, just this is the type of stuff that like if we were on a phone call, we would talk about. And that's what I think is cool about it. Cause it's just like these conversations are, I would say actually much more important than like always having like tactical sort of like systems and strategies because this stuff empowers you to think differently. And like, this is like the level of thinking that I've realized is required to get to the next level. It's like thinking about your thinking. And so a thing that I'm a huge... I am constantly, constantly doing this. So it's a concept called divergent thinking. And so you take a concept or a problem that you have, and then you ask yourself questions around that problem. So let's just say the problem is, why do all my team members keep leaving? So then you ask yourself, what do I need to do to attract world-class team members? What would I do right now if I wanted every single one of my team members to leave? 
how should I behave to be a leader that's going to attract team members that stay? What vision do I need to cast to make people see the long term? Like you ask yourself all these questions surrounding this topic and you just sit with that topic for like 20 to 30 minutes. And I, I'm telling you, you are going to start coming up with the best solutions ever because rather than just complaining and being a problem finder you start becoming a solution maker and this is something that at impact school we constantly tell our team we don't want to hear problems i don't want you to be a problem maker i need you to be a solution maker so when you come to me with a problem i need you to bring me two solutions as well and then we'll pick one or we'll approve or amend it ladies and gentlemen there you go lauren once again Greatly appreciate you, and I'm looking to looking forward to doing your podcast and uh, you coming to the studio and uh, you know doing part two in person. Yes, I love it. I love it. And by the way, if the question, if the answers aren't within, they are on Google. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you joining, and uh, I'm looking forward to to staying connected and seeing what we could do. I love it. Thank you. I appreciate you.